Hello, welcome to the 20th episode of Webcam Sessions. If this is the first time you've watched one of these, be sure to check out the other episodes I've been doing here with Ukulele Underground. Uh, and if you've been watching all 20 of them, thanks for sticking around. We hope to be doing them for a long time. Uh, it's a lot of fun because we get to talk about all sorts of different concepts and techniques and everything. And today we're going to work on something that's pretty uh, stock, meaning it's something that's, that's done by a lot of ukulele players, by a lot of teachers everything else, uh, it's a scale. We're gonna learn how to play the major scale today. And as a little preface to it, I'm not much of a scale guy, personally. Uh, some people love using scales as an exercise. Other people find them kind of boring and monotonous. And I'm kind of in the boring and monotonous part, but they're still a great exercise. And it's not exactly a great sales pitch to start off saying, I think they're kind of boring and monotonous, but there's a lot of technique that can be learned through playing a scale very well. So if you're the type of person that wants to be able to use scales because you enjoy kind of that grind of working through them, this is the video for you. But if you don't enjoy doing scales, we're still going to be talking a lot about fretting concepts and things that will apply for when you're playing you know, general licks or things that utilize much of the same techniques that scales do. So to start here, we're going to play our C major scale. And uh, in this episode, we're going to focus more on the playing of it. We're not going to worry too much about the theory behind it. Uh, that'll probably be another episode. So let's go ahead and pick up our ukuleles. And using our thumb with our playing hand, let's start by playing our C string open. We'll then follow this with our middle finger on the second fret of the C string. Play that. So we have zero on the C, then two on the C. Then we're going to play zero on the E, and now we're going to take our index finger, place it on one of the E, then our ring finger on three of the E. So, so far is zero C, two C, zero E, one E, three on the E, and the note names, in case you want to know, are C, D, E, F, G. And to follow up on the A string, we're going to play open on the A, which is an A note, two on the A, which is a B note, and three on the A, which is a C note. So we have zero, two on the C, zero, one, three on the E, zero, two, three on the A, or C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now one of the tricks to playing a scale is being able to ascend and descend. So let's try descending. Take your ring finger, place it on the third fret of the A string, then middle finger on two of the A, then open A, then three on the E with your ring finger, one on the E with your index, zero on the E, two on the C, and zero on the C, with your zero finger, obviously, right? Um, so, that's your major scale. That's what we call a C major scale. And it is what it is. It's kind of one of the first things people oftentimes learn for when they're learning how to solo or trying to just take their, their finger style playing to the next level. Scales are a great exercise to do that. And the C major scale is kind of the easiest one to do on an ukulele. But we don't wanna stop there because what we wanna be able to do is take this scale and actually move it, actually use the shape that it has to be able to play any major scale on the ukulele. So the way that we do this is we add the number of whatever we're moving to, to each one of the numbers we just did. So if we think about this, we have 0, 2, 0, 1, 3, 0, 2, 3, being the fret numbers that we're playing, right? So let's say that I wanna play a D major scale. Well, what I do is I find a D note on my C string. So my C note's here, my C sharp D flat is here, and my D will be here. So I found my D note, it's on two. So if I add the number two to the other numbers of the scale, so that zero, two, zero, one, three, zero, two, three, if I add the number two to it, I'm gonna get two, four, two, three, five, two, four, five. Now that's a lot of math, uh, which who likes math, right? But all that it's trying to say is, the intervals stay exactly the same. It just moves as, a, as kind of a total package. But the reason it's so much more difficult to play a D major scale than it is to play a C is because with the C major scale, we have open strings. And when we're playing with open strings, we don't need our fingers to be anywhere near it, right? We use our zero finger, uh, meaning no finger, right? But as soon as we move it up and those zeros become something like a two, we now have to play one other number that we weren't really accounting for with a finger previously. 
So what this means is we, instead of using only three fingers, like what we did with our C major scale, we have to use four fingers. So let's go ahead and try the D scale and let's work through each one of the fingering. So start with our index finger on two of the C. Then our ring finger is going to come up to four on the C. And then we're going to play two on the E with our index finger. And then we're going to play three on the E with our middle finger. Then five on the E with our pinky. Then two on our A with our index. Four on our A with our ring. And five on our A with our pinky. So those notes are D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. Now let's go ahead and try the descent. So we're gonna start there with the pinky on five. Ring on four of the A, index on two, pinky on five, middle on three, both on the E there, index on two, the E, ring on four of the C, and index on two of the C. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, if that's an A note there, why don't I just play it open, right? And while it is true I can play a, a D major scale with some open strings that could look something like this, the problem is it doesn't take that shape to move. Because if I wanted to play, say, a G major scale, I could find my G note all the way up here. I'll be on the seventh fret of the C string. And I take that same shape. That's not it. That's a Lydian scale. We're playing major. Take that same shape and move it up. And I can get my G major scale now at this point, right? It's the same shape that I just played down here with my D major scale. And the same shape that I did here with my C. What you'll notice is once you learn it with the D, it's much easier to move because the shape stays the same because there are no zeros like there were with the C, right? So that's your major scale and how you can move it. But the other side of today's lesson is really what I think is more important. And that's the fretting habits that go with playing a scale or playing something in this style. So, you know, if you're working on your favorite ACDC or Jimi Hendrix lick uh, and you're trying to play these notes more quickly individually, the way that you fret the notes is much different than how we chord. So for, for an example here, if we're playing a G major chord, which is something like this, uh, index finger on the second fret of the C, ring finger on the third fret of the E, and middle finger on the second fret of the A, what you'll notice is all of my fingers are very much propped up over the strings. They're a nice kind of perpendicular angle. They're not relaxed and, and all, you know, like this. They're trying to make sure that they're all touching the string that they want to be touching and not really touching strings behind it. Uh, take this F chord as another great example where I place my middle finger on the second fret of the G, index on the first fret of the E, and now my like ring on third fret of the A, or you can use your pinky there. Uh, either way it works. But the point is each one of these fingers are very much perpendicular to the strings so that they're not touching any, any other strings so that you can get a very nice ring with your sound, right? But when you're playing scales, you're trying to enunciate individual notes. And what's fun is you can actually relax these angles and utilize your fingers to actually help mute strings that aren't being played. So when I'm playing a major scale, like to say this D major scale, instead of playing it like this, which is much like how I would play chords with my fingers sort of up and over. Instead, what I'm going to do is take this finger and relax it and actually have it touching, not barred all the way across, but touching the E and the A strings a little bit and having it just pushing down on the C string. And when I place my ring finger on here, I can have it more relaxed. You notice how it's not trying to be perfectly propped up. It's a little bit more relaxed because the only string that we want to play is the C string, right? So if I'm accidentally touching the E and A a little bit, in some ways it's good because we don't want those notes to ring. And at the moment that I go to the two on the E, I'm then going to prop up my ring finger a little bit to get that note to be able to ring open or even take off the finger entirely. And from here, you'll notice that my index finger is a little bit more relaxed. Again, not that steep angle. As I'm walking up here, you'll notice that my fingers are not quite at that steep of an angle. So what maybe once looked something like this, may look something more like this. And whenever you're playing lines like this, it can really help to keep that more relaxed angle 
So we did a little blues soloing lesson. Uh, we did one last week that was just talking about single strings, but uh, several weeks ago we did this thing about pockets. And this is a, a technique that can be very much applied to that. Trying to keep our fingers more uh, level with the strings, trying to not be so perpendicular, can really help get more speed and more comfort with whatever it is you're fretting. So you can try this with anything that involves playing single melody lines, whether you know, you're playing a, a scale, a blues solo, playing Pineapple Mango by Daniel Ho, it doesn't really matter. Um, those are going to be the techniques that you wanna to try to use as you're playing through it. Um, and so it's a different style of playing than just using the chords. Well, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Uh, scales are an interesting thing, and if you guys really like this video, I'm working on a scale, uh, maybe a series of videos working on different scales, like Mixolydian scales, Pentatonic scales, Dorian scales, whatever, uh, could be something that we work on more. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. And uh, again, thank you so much for checking out the 20th episode, and I'll see you soon.